Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. And today I'm going to do a very quick update video for Demetrius, a mod I covered a few weeks ago, as you can see here. Uh, thanks, Gyros Meister, for adding it to the Steam page. That's pretty cool to see. Uh, but the mod essentially is a brilliant overhaul for Wrath of Sparta for Rome 2 that makes it more historically accurate. So and authentic, you know, you really feel how historically accurate it is in the mod. If you haven't tried it already, give it a try. It's it's a beautiful looking mod, beautiful visually looking mod, both in the campaign with the fantastic new units as well. You get eight playable factions here, including uh, another one coming uh, in October with Pergamon, which makes it nine. You've got some great campaign mechanics as well, brought over from the other DLCs, Banditry, plagues, government actions, things like that. A brilliant new recruitment system that actually is quite unique depending on what faction you play with different types of barracks and things like that. And some new things coming in the new update as well, which I'll cover right now. Um, and some other uh, other like really, really fantastic things that you just have to try, guys. Uh, so I'm going to go through the uh, updates really quickly in this little document that I have here. And uh, we'll check it out in the game as well together. And then, yeah, that, that'll be this very quick video, guys. So I hope you enjoy it. And let's get right into it. So as Pyrus, as Epirus, you get some reworked uh, recruitment mechanics here, which I really, really like. Historically, Epirus had lower manpower, as you can see here, which means that now as Pyrus, you lose some recruitment slots. But in its stead, you get recruitment ranks. Um, so if you look here, you get rank four units now as Pyrus in recruitment, which is really cool. So it means you lose a recruitment slot, but you get that better rank, which is really, really cool. In fact, if you go in here, you can see how much more the rank adds to various values on the left here on this panel, which is really nice to see, actually. Very well done uh, on that in that regard for Pyrus. But apart from that, Pyrus just generally also gets some uh, naval uh, mercenary recruitment that's quite special to him. So if you use this navy here to access the mercenary panel, you get these two mercenary units here, which is very cool to see. So you can hire that. That is a unique mercenary pool to Pyrus only. Uh, but apart from that, uh, factions generally get a mercenary pool that they can access. That's going to be off the coast of Biotia here and the Ionian Sea as well. So just to keep that in mind, there will be generally more naval mercenaries available to you in the future, but that's going to be something that's unique to Pyrus here, and there will be a few specific areas that you can get into and access. So the Ionian Sea here and off the coast of Biodia. So very, very cool stuff happening from a mercenary recruitment point of view. And then moving on, Pergamon has been added as a faction, guys, which is really cool. So if you go... If I go back into the main menu here and uh, we have a look at the factions available in the mod. You get Pergamon and they have a very unique starting position as well. So as Pergamon, you start as a vassal of Lysimachos. You can't declare independence for a few turns just yet. I mean, that that's kind of a double edged sword, obviously, but you do get access to a really cool political uh, action. So every faction in this mod gets a unique political action that they can use. Pergamon has one that accesses Lysimachus's coffers. Uh, so you get access to a treasury. You can access more funds if you need it to recruit more recruitment uh, units, you know, or if, you're, uh, if your income is in the negative, whatever you want to do that for. But it is at the cost of corruption. So you do engage... Um, your rival political families and more uh, corruption, uh, which is interesting in and of itself. Quite an interesting mechanic. But Pergamon is a is a really cool faction to start with as well. So you've got Macedon to your west in these islands, which is um, a bit worrying. You know, uh, you can use. Uh, I played with Pergamon a little bit earlier, and I basically used this first army to build up and take Mytilene uh, very quickly uh, to deny uh, Macedon access, quick access to my side of the Aegean here. But also, uh, Bithnia is an interesting faction that you're going to have to deal with as well. They're going to start going after you quite early on uh, up here. Uh, so one to keep an eye on. And obviously, you're a vassal of Lysimachos, so you can't quite declare independence just yet. But you've got an enemy in Macedon to your west. You've got an enemy in Ephesus uh, to your south as well. Even though Lysimachos is a buffer between you, you can absolutely go down and try and knock on some doors there as well. So again, 
We've got a new faction in the mod, and it is a brilliant faction, so I would highly recommend it, guys. And then moving on quickly, we've got Pirates, which is... I mean, this is awesome. I think with any Total War game, if you got some dynamic gameplay coming up uh, in the form of, you know, offshoot or pop-up navies, armies, it's a really, really cool thing to deal with. Something that you're going to have to just focus your attention on momentarily that just adds a bit more immersion to the game. And in this mod, it's it's no different. So you get pirates in Illyrian pirates in the game in the off the coast of the Ionian Sea. We're going to get more pirates in the future as well with the Pamphylian and the Calician pirates that will be added in the southeastern portion of the map as well. So that's coming as well, guys. Uh, and it's very, very, very cool. I love that. I think Rome 2 Grand Campaign, you can get pirates pop up in certain areas of the map. But I would have liked them to be a bit more unique. I would have liked them to have a bit more kind of active uh, pressure on your faction and your port cities. These guys are going to be raiding your trade trade routes. They're going to be raiding your port cities. So keep an eye on those. A very cool addition to the mod here. Um, and then we're going to get cults. So similar to Empire Divided, cults are coming. But they're going to be coming in the form of naval mercenaries. So I just uh said this a few moments ago we're going to get basically a mercenary pool in various um parts of the map so you're going to be able to access mercenaries off the coast of the ionian sea and off the coast of biodia so very very cool there and then we're going to get contextual civil wars so depending on what faction you're you are pyrus demetrius uh Lysimachos, obviously this is a kind of time period where factions come into power uh, by having a kind of internal struggle with other families, right? So if you go into the political tab here, uh, you've got other nobles. And if their loyalty gets a bit low, you will um, face the wrath of a civil war, essentially. And I quite like that. I think the Grand Campaign suffers a little bit from civil wars because you, you can easily control them. But the bigger you get, the more a problem a civil war gets and it's more like a thorn in your side you don't quite want to deal with it because late game you want to just take over the world right but here it's it's quite cool it's quite contextually relevant if for some reason you've expanded out for example as pergamon and you've taken the islands and and for some reason the islands rebel against you and there's a civil war it just it just adds a bit more immersion to the game that makes you feel more involved in the historical authenticity of the time period you could go out with your navies take back your cities, reestablish some political supremacy over the region. And, and that gives that just gives you a bit more. I, I quite like that. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a lot more immersive in the game for a smaller map like this and for factions that have quite unique political and character um, traits uh, and kind of situations going on. So, for example, if you go into uh, your characters here, you, you have traits that are quite unique to them and it's going to be interesting if some of these characters that have really cool traits start rebelling against you for example um so that's a nice really cool addition coming in the next update as well obviously we've got some new units so three units for pergamon one for the aetolians we've got new flags with Kos, ephesos ikaria which is nice to see uh new emerging factions as well with the orestians and amphipolis uh, on various regions of the map we've got some campaign balancing changes as well mercenaries will be 20 percent cheaper to maintain stables maintenance is cost uh, cost is halved wonders are nerfed lissamakos got some improved infrastructure all really nice things to have really good that gyros meister is looking at that campaign balancing throughout the creation of the mod as well really important to have Again, as I mentioned, more characters will get historical traits as well. So what I just showed you, the Basilius um, as Pergamon, other factions are going to be getting traits like that, which is really good to see. Adds to that historical authenticity that Gyros Meister is trying to achieve with this mod. And then finally, which I think is really cool, is you get a bit more historically authentic relations between factions. So Messenia is going to be getting worse relations between it and Sparta, Athens is Sparta, Athens and the Islanders, Aetolia and the Biotian League as well. So it just gives that dynamic Peloponnesian kind of war that could happen any moment um, type of gameplay here. You, you as Athens have to kind of always be at a knife's edge with Sparta. Sparta here with the Messenians as well. So just really interesting stuff happening with this mod. And I think you'll, you'll agree if you go in and try it, which I definitely recommend you try it, guys. Um, it's getting more and more dynamic, more and more immersive. And the more that uh, Gyros Meister does in the next few months uh, with mechanics like this, with porting over mechanics like the cults, 
the new naval mercenaries, you know, just things like that will make this mod more fleshed out and more of a joy to play, more of a rival for Hellenica, which is also a great mod for this uh, DLC as well, and a mod that I'm going to be covering in the next few weeks as well, so stay tuned in for that. And that's it for today, guys. This update for um, Demetrius is going to be dropping in October, so keep your eyes on the ball. It's going to be coming very soon. I'll do an update video for it as well as soon as it comes out. So yeah, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like or drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. Let me know if you watched that video a few weeks ago and you've tried this mod. What do you think about the mod so far um, in the comment section below? And obviously, subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay, and news. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.